Hey, it's Mark from Power Up. How are you doing today? Today's Friday and I've got a new feature for you. What I want to start doing on a Friday is do a Power Up special. So the intention is we're going to go out and we're going to find a question from the community and we're going to build the solution to that question right here. It's a little bit better. Uh, normally we just put a forum post out or some uh, screenshots maybe, but I actually want to go a step further and going to build that solution. We should really help people out. So what have we got for you today? Um, let's have a quick look and see what question we can come up with. So yesterday I was talking to Milo F on the Microsoft Flow community and Milo is asking about how to create an RSVP uh, to email from a Microsoft form submission where a user can register for a webinar and then they'll get an email with a calendar invite in there so they can add it to their own, uh, their own um, calendar. So great, I thought the first solution might be to go and um, to go and actually put an ICS file as an attachment into an email, send a nice thank you email for registering. Uh, but then I got thinking about it and I thought, well, maybe there's a nicer way that we could do it. Because Flow allows us to connect to our calendar events, why don't we actually invite the person to our calendar event? That solves a couple of uh, benefits for us. Uh, the first thing is we solve the original uh, request. The user will get an invite to the meeting, therefore it goes into their calendar. But on top of that, we get the added benefit that we know who's going to be attended and how many people are registered. So on the actual calendar event, we've got the registrations on there. And secondly, the other benefit we get is if we want to change any details of the meeting, then we can do that. Because if we change it in the calendar event, Outlook will automatically send out an update to all the people who have been invited. So that's even better. So what I thought we'd do now, let's just jump straight in and actually go and try to, to build this uh, solution up. So the first thing that I want to show you is uh, we've got some events on my calendar at the moment. Now if we're doing this for real, then maybe we, uh, we might want to actually use a different calendar. Maybe we don't want to put it on our own um, calendar, but maybe we want to put it into an Office 365 group or a Microsoft team or something like that. But now, for now, just for demo purposes, I'm just going to put it into my own calendar. So what we can do if we open up our event, then we can see we've got our event in here with the subject, uh, we've got our uh, time and date, and we've got a, a Teams uh, meeting link in there. And we've got another one for uh, the 25th and one for the 1st of February. So we've got a couple of events in there that the user might want to choose from. You know, maybe we do a weekly webinar here. So that's our events all set up. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to actually go and create our Microsoft form. So we want the user to be able to register for the webinar. So if we just go over to our Microsoft forms now and we can create a new form in here. So let's call this um, Insider Webinar registration and forms are very nicely suggest some options that I may want to include in there so yes I want to add these ones in and also I want to make email address a required field we just want to add one more option in and we'll call this a webinar oops the hardest thing to do is to type when people are watching you and in our webinar we're just going to put in our um, the subject of our calendar items. The reason I'm going to do it uh, the same as the subject is it just makes it a bit easier in flow for me to actually find the items. So we'll do one for the 18th, one for the 25th and one for the uh, 1st of February. So that's going to be the 25th and that will be the... It'd be nice if they replaced text when I pop it over the top of it. And here we go, uh, to February 01. There we go. So we've got our calendar invites in here and that's going to be required as well. Nice simple form, first name, last name, email address and webinar. So excellent, that's what we want. So now I've got my form, what I want to do is go and start creating my flow. So what we can do if we go back to the browser and we're going to create a new flow, we'll create from blank. And what we want to do is take this from a Microsoft form submission. So that will be our trigger. Pick the form we want to load from. And we will do our insider webinar registration. The first step we need to do when we respond to a Microsoft form is we actually need to go and get the details from the form submission. It doesn't provide that to us automatically from the trigger. So what we're just going to do is pass in the, uh, the ID. Now, 
this this actually gives us a, um, a collection of IDs. In reality, it will only ever be one, but it doesn't matter. It will still work just the same. Okay, so let's make sure that's saved properly. Save that out. Okay. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to actually go to our calendar and get the calendar instance for, for this particular event. So we have uh, Office 365 Outlook. We have a ton of events in here. So we want to do get events. And I will choose my calendar. Like I say, in reality, we're probably going to want to use a different connection here for maybe an insider um, uh, user account or Office 365 group, that's fine. And then what we want to do is we don't want to return all of our events, only the one that matches the webinar details. So this is why we kept the, uh, the subject name the same as the response in our form. So now I can just say, bring back all the calendar events where the subject equals the webinar value chosen in my form. And it should only return one, but I'm just going to do a top count of one anyway, just to be sure. Okay, so once we've got that calendar event, what we can do now is we can actually go and we can update that calendar event like this. And I'll go back and choose my calendar again, and I'll pass in the ID from the get events. Now, what you'll notice is when I go and do the, when I go and add the ID in here, because get events again returns a collection of events, it's automatically going to wrap this in a apply to each. So this will go over every event that matches um, this filter. We know there's only going to be one, so we know we're okay. So we don't really care that it's done that. Subject, now I have to fill in the required fields on that list. So let's just go and write the subject back over the top and the same with the start time and the same, same, and the same with the end time. Now, this is where we want to make a little change. So what we can do is we want to change the optional attendees. These are the people that we've just been invited. So first of all, we want to include the optional attendees already on the event. And we now want to add in the new person who has just filled in our form. So that's the email address on our get response details. So we can put that in there. We want to leave everything else the same. We don't want to change anything else because if we don't uh, fill the details in here, it won't overwrite what's already there. And that's it. So let's uh, give it a title. Let's call it um, Process Webinar Registrations. It really makes sense to use good titles. And what I normally do is I normally give a project name uh, before um, before my flow and then it's easy for me to group them together I have a number of flows for the same projects because when you get 20 30 50 100 flows it can get difficult so if I just process all these with inside let's say inside a webinar is my, my project and then process registrations and that's all I need so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger when a response is submitted I'm then going to get the response details I'll get any events from my calendar that match and then I'll go and update the event to add the new email address in. Now, because I'm updating the event, as we expect, we should then get an invite into my, my personal outlook. And let's go and see what happens, shall we? Save that. Let's go back. Yes, I am sure I want to leave the page. This really confuses me because I'm always now thinking, hmm, have I saved or have I not saved? I'm not sure. Fortunately, I know I have saved because it tells me up here. So I click OK, we go back. Right, we have no runs. So let's go to my form. Let's fill this in. Mark Stokes, my email address. And then I want to register for the 2019-01-18. Hit Submit. Thank you, your response was submitted. Let's sit and wait for flow. We refresh, succeeded. It's run already. That's not bad. So let's see what happened. So response was submitted. Oh, I get a little email notification as well. Let's just come in. Uh, so get my response details. I can see that in here for my form. Go and get my events. I can see that I have a single event here, uh, which is the correct one. Apply to each. I can see I've got one item back. I'm going to update my event, and it looks like that's been successful. Lots of little green tickets. 
that's good so what i can do now if i go to my outlook i can see i've got an email in here with an insider invite if i click yes i want to attend that and then go to my personal calendar i can see that now uh, milo i have my webinar registration in my calendar open this up and there it is So that's the beauty of it. That was so easy to do and we've got it. But like I said, there is another benefit that we might actually get from this. So if we go back into our original calendar item and hit edit, then if I go in, maybe I want to write in an agenda. So let's say I want to do 11, oh, oh it's going to be intro. Oh. Production. Like I said, the hardest thing to do is to type when people are watching you. Then 15 can be the news. 11.45 can be a Q and A. And then a 12 o'clock close. Okay. Close. Oh, no, we don't want to debug. We don't want to debug outlook.com. Close. Close. There we go. Love typing. Okay, so now if I send that back, this is going to go back and update all of my attendees. Go back into my email. I'll go back into my calendar and I should uh, receive an update. Here we go. Here's an update come in here. Open up the calendar item. I now have my agenda. So we have the added benefit of being able to send updates and the added benefit that we can actually see who is attending our, um, our meeting. So that, I think, is pretty good. So, Milo, I hope that answers your question. And um, if it does, please do comment on the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you like that. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel. It's brand new. This is only the second video I put out there, but I definitely am committing to doing more. So please do follow. Um, send me some updates. Tell me things you'd like to see. Uh, we'll be covering Microsoft Flow, Microsoft Power Apps, and Microsoft Power BI. I'll probably even do some, um, some Office 365 news, and maybe some fun virtual reality stuff as well. So let me know what you want to see, and I will be delighted to include that. But for now, Milo, I hope that helps you, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.